show you the basics of how to use a Casio graphical calculator. I'm using an FX986DG2, but the same rules that I'm going to teach you are true for all of the Casio graphical calculator system, as they all use the same basic menus. In order to turn it on, we press this button here, AC on, and if you wanted to turn it off again, notice that it says off above this button, and this is accessed by the shift key, so shift, off, to turn it off again. Turning it on, we're presented with our basic screen where we would do most of our calculations. In order to use this, type in your calculation, whatever it may be, and you notice there is no equals button. Execute is your equals button. Notice as well that it shows us our line of working and then carries on going. So we can type in more sums and it will just keep on working down. And eventually when we've done our work and we reach the end of the page, it will just keep scrolling onwards. It might be that you want to delete everything from the screen just because of the way you like to work, in which case notice these little menu options appearing at the bottom of the screen here, which relate to the keys immediately below them. Here we've got DEL for delete. Pressing that one it will say do we want to delete a particular line or do we want to delete all? I want to delete all, so it says yes, F1, and they're all gone. Other things to particularly note on the display this button is very useful, of course. This is a power button. If we want to type in something like 2 to the power of 3, press 2 to the power of 3, press equals, and it will display 8. If we wanted to do something like 2 to the power of 3 plus 4, well, if I just type those buttons in, it will understand that as being 2 to the power of 7. If I wanted 2 to the power of 3 plus 4, I need to make sure that the cursor appears in the correct place. So pressing right on this directional pad will make the, cur the cursor appear bigger, moving it down. I can then type in the rest of my line. Of course, there is our answer. We can also do fractions on this. This button here, A, B over C, pressing that makes it appear to be a fraction. I can then type in whatever I want, use the down button to get to the denominator, 3 over 7, and it will understand it as being 3 over 7. Well, this is fine, but maybe we want the decimal version of that. This button here, F to D, allows us to change between the fraction and the decimal versions. If I wanted to do a mixed number, you can see above here, we've got a little diagram showing different sections where we would want to go. So pressing Shift and the fraction button will make it now appear as if it were a mixed number, 2 and 5 sevenths. It will convert that to a top-heavy number. We can then do whatever we wanted to do with it, fractions and decimals, it will then switch between the two. But if you notice, written in brown just above it, A, B over C to D over C, pressing this will allow us to convert, just in fraction terms, between top heavy and mixed number. Other things to notice, above the power button, we've got our nth root button. Pressing shift and that, we can see we can now type in something like the third root of seven and it will work that out for us. We've also, above the EXP button, got a little pi symbol. So there's pi. It just understands it as being pi. Maybe we want the decimal version again, so we can bring that up. Other very useful buttons, things like this one, the store button. Maybe I've done some sort of a sum. I want to use that value later on. I can then store it to a particular place in its memory. You notice in red we've got all of these little letters appearing here and maybe we want to store our answer to alpha A. So it's now going to store 10 in the space it knows as A. Then do a bunch of other sums, whatever they may be. It doesn't really matter what we're doing, but of course we lose our answer from the top. Maybe now I want to go back and use A. Alpha A, there was our answer from previously. And of course I can do whatever I want with that. 2 plus A, it will understand that. And we can store in each of these little different letters. So we've got 26 different places to store numbers. If I want to, whoops, just put an X there. So let's press delete and it will delete that one. If I want to store something in A again, there's no need to clear A. All I do is store something over A again, and then that is the new value of A. You don't ever need to clear the values of each of the different memories. Of course, in the shift functions, we've got inverse sine, cos, and tan within there. 
we've got e to the power of x above our natural log, and all sorts of other functions that you can work out. Now it might be that you're working in degrees or radians, but you want to use the other format. In which case, to do this, look above the menu button and we see Setup. Shift Setup allows us to access different parts and change different settings within the calculator. Scrolling down, of course, gives us access to all of them. It cycles back up to the top. But this one, Angle, we're going to choose degrees or radians depending on what we want to use. I'm currently in radians, maybe I want to be in degrees, so I press the button below it. I'm now in degrees mode. Exiting, and I can now do some calculation in degrees mode. Notice, with, trigon with trigonometrical values, it is going to give us the exact answer, so it'll show roots and fractions where it can. If I want to change back to radians, again, just scroll down and press radians. Accessing different parts of the calculator is done through this men menu button. Pressing that, we've got each of these different areas, graphical calculator parts, dynamic stuff, tables, statistics, and so on that we'll look at in later videos. To access these different parts, we'll again use this directional pad, just moving the cursor around. There is some stuff at the bottom as well. Generally, we'll use the stuff on the first page. You can either move these around and then press the execute button, or if you notice, there's little numbers in the bottom so you can work out which one to press to get to the part you want. Generally, your calculations will be done in this part, the run and matrix mode, which has got a little one in it, so I'll press a one and we return to that point. Other things that you may want to use, something like the factorial button, if you press options, it will bring up different sections with different functions in that are not available just via the main buttons. The one that we want, the factorial button, is under the probability menu. It's not any of these, list, matrices, complex number, and so on. But we notice here, above the F6 button, is a little arrow saying that there's more. It's going to bring up another menu. So pressing F6 will bring up some more. One of which is the probability button. Press that one, so F3, the button below it. And it now brings up our factorial. So maybe we want to do something like 5 factorial, and it'll work that out for us. Notice also that it's got NPR and NCR that you may be using. In order to work with these, type in some number, 8, P, 2 brings up our calculation, or 10C3, and it brings up the value for that one as well. If I want to access the complex parts now, I don't want any of these, and I don't want the other options that it gives me over there, so I can press the exit button, and that will bring me back one level in the menu. I wanted complex, let's go and find these, there you go, the complex ones, pressing that, and we can now do each of our different calculations in complex mode, so 2 plus 3i, and it understands that number, maybe we want to do something with it. If I just press squared, it will take the previous answer and square it. Now if I wanted to work with this idea of the previous answer, it's actually above this negative button here. So maybe I want to do something like the previous answer squared plus two times the previous answer, and it will work that out. I can, of course, now press it again. It will take the previous answer. It will just keep working with the next answer each time. Obviously, these are getting quite silly answers now. Hyperbolics is another part you may want to use. This is another option. None of those. There's our hyperbolics. So maybe we want something like shine of three, and it'll work that out. It will only give us the decimal version, though. It won't give us any particular value involving ease. That's the basics of how to use the, the calculator. In other videos, I'll show you how to use things such as the statistical modes and the graphs.